G'day and welcome to episode 17 of Let's Get Fiscal, the official podcast of the Australian Employment Party. Tim Jones is here again with me this week. How are you going, Tim? Hello again and welcome back. Uh, thank Yeah, thank you. And welcome back to you too. Um, Tim and I are going to have a chat about uh, Parliament this week, Tim. Yes, yes. It's been terribly interesting. It's uh, um, something has happened this week week that hasn't happened in uh, 40 years 40, 40 plus years. years all right well, yeah I'm, i'll be very interested to find out what that was sure or i, I mean i kind of know what it was but how the hell it worked because i don't really understand much about that political side sure but before we get to that i'll just do the quick housekeeping um uh, everyone sh- can go and find out more about us at australianemploymentparty.org they can search australian Empo- employment party on youtube itunes or facebook and uh they can also join up online just click the join now button. Uh, we're up to 101 members. So uh, we're on our road to registration at 500. If you have any questions about the party or you want to get involved, but you're not sure about uh, something, then feel free to hit me up as a private message on Facebook. Once you just get into the group, you can see me there. Um, you can also DM Tim on Twitter. He's at fourth left two, and he'll follow you back so you can DM him. And uh, you can also get me on Twitter at Ian Dooley, that's I-A-I-N-D-O-O-L-E-Y. And if you want to get our attention or uh, flag flag something for discussion, the hashtag we use is OzMMT, that's O-Z-M-M-T. Okay, so what was the big thing this week that didn't that hasn't happened in 40 years? Uh, well, the first well time. It, it, what happened was the opposition was running parliament. It put up three votes. They didn't put up a vote of no confidence, and now Bill Shorten... Um, said that he wasn't, didn't want, wasn't there to play games, he was actually trying to do something for the country, and, and he did. And he made a complete fall of Malcolm Turnbull. Now, what happened right now, this is how it played out, is that um, a member of the opposition was parading up and down um, uh, Parliament House with his luggage. And uh, P- Parliament was supposed to finish at 4.30, that's the, that's the norm. Uh, so he looked like he... And then he got in the car and headed for the airport. Um, and then halfway there, the story is from Labor that they would call him back and said, no, no, you can't do this. Now, whether that's true or not is another story. There was a spotter at the airport waiting to see that the Libs had seen this person, I forget his name actually, he's a minor player, um, heading out. So they grabbed their bags and they said, oh, beauty, you know, uh, away, away. Because they don't work Friday, they only work four days a week. So how is it, how would that, why would the Libs think it was okay to leave? If the if this other guy was leaving, How well, leave? well, because um, they they're not offering pairs, just like uh, Tony Abbott did um, when a Parliament was close under Julia Gillard. He didn't offer pairs, and uh, people missed funerals, they missed uh, births of their babies, all this sort of thing. So it's what, very... what's, off, what's offering pairs? Ah, oh, you mean like yeah, uh, yeah. reducing the votes? Well, yeah, you've got to have you've got to have the people there. You can't you can't uh, usually if they offer pair pairs, say if there's a, a function that um, somebody has to be fo- meeting a foreign dignitary, they say, okay, no, that's fine, um, we'll offer you a pair and we're not going to try to take advantage of the fact that you aren't not in Parliament for, uh, right. when, yeah, when they do it. So a, it's like a, they've a, got 76 or 75 whatever votes they need yeah, and, and, yeah. and then they just go, okay, well, we'll remove one of our team from the chamber. Yeah, that's right. And Tony, and, and Tony Abbott started this... Um, uh, you know, just vicious stuff, really vicious. Anyway, so uh, so what happened was that uh, Michael Keenan, uh, Peter Dutton, and Christian Porter, three favourite favourites of mine, uh, headed off out of the Parliament. And uh, Christopher Pine, who's the whip for the um, House of Reps, um, he locked, he just had no control over this. So of course, what happened then was that uh, uh, they. Um, I think Labor asked for an extension of time, an extension of Parliament, and they just didn't expect this to happen. So they, they got an extension because there's no reason why there wouldn't be. And I think that was part of the vote because they'd already were down. They, the government couldn't knock it back because Labor had the numbers, you see. Right. So, okay. so, and this is all cooked up by Tony Burke. He's a, he's a brilliant performer in Parliament. He's very, very clever. He's a part of the, you know, one of the right wings. I always say that Labor is a... Um, 
a centrist party. You know, they talk about Labor being left wing. It's a centrist party, mm-hmm. and uh, Tony Burke is is one of the right. You know, and so is so is Shorten and all this sort of thing. And but so what's what happened was that, and there's this fantastic shot from Ellinghouse and one of the uh, the parliamentary uh, photographers for Sydney Morning Herald, showing Malcolm Turnbull walking out alone at the end it's like a movie shot you know there, there were a few people shuffling papers the the uh, functionaries of the parliament but there he is and he had a very he had a grumpy cat face on the, the whole time and he they had no they were trying to um stall the proceedings but labor won three votes okay the so opposition won, was running the that, parliament do you mean they won by three votes on one issue like no 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 they won three they put up three propositions i think one was to extend the time uh of uh the sitting of the parliament and they won that one right and then they put up two others and then so people said well you know why didn't you put up a vote anyway this is all just history but what happened what happened is and then tony abbott is giggling away in the background just really enjoying his own you know he's, he's he's big on schadenfreude enjoying malcolm turnbull being humiliated he was made to look right. an absolute fool, and so, you know, so Peter Dutton's a bit of an Abbott loyal, isn't he? Uh, yes, yes. So whether he whether he did this deliberately or not, whether it was all part of Tony's, whether you know, and these people are all buddy buddy. Like Elbow is a friend of of, of of Chris Pine, believe it or not, you know, where he's friendly, and and uh, Bill Shorten, you know. You, Butter wouldn't melt in his mouth when he was talking with that Tony Abbott behind the speaker's chair, and this is. It, you know, we're talking about this before. These people, they operate on a some sort of mutual level that most of us can barely imagine. Mm. You know, Tony Abbott and, and the Libs have been destroying our country, our reputation, our infrastructure, uh, the poor. They've been, you know, it's it's been disgusting for the last couple of years but these people they all they chat you know they, they cock their, their their fingers and when they're sharing their cup of tea together it's it's a very chummy yeah although you might think that's probably just uh, that might be for show you know you never know i mean I, I i i kind of imagine that behind closed doors um i mean i've heard i've heard a couple of things you know paul keating uh talking about the opposition behind closed doors uh, you know, just sort of stories recounted by people in interviews, and he was pretty, <clears throat> pretty, pretty vitri- vitriolic. Oh yes, yeah. Well, so he, I can imagine he, that. I can imagine that. Um, you know, perhaps in a private discussion between Bill Shorten and Tanya Plibersek, that they might not have very nice things to say about Tony Abbott. But <laughs> no, no. Well, that's. I mean, you know, we have to be civil. I mean, we try to be <laughs> yeah. civil on this show too. But, yes, indeed. Uh, but c- civility is one thing. But if somebody, if if I disagree with somebody, they know it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they don't come away wondering whether I like them or not. Mm. You know, and I don't have to be rude to do it. I just, you know, that's the end of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So, so this, what, what's interesting about this, this sort of uh, little melee in the parliament mm. is that it's, it, it's sort of, um, I mean, from the, from our vantage point, from where we sit now, right? We sort of think, oh, okay, we're trying to get this party started and. You know, get out there and win some hearts and minds. Talk mm. to people about modern monetary theory. Get, get some people behind this whole thing of the government yep. spending and functional finance. Yep. And that's that's one battle. <clears throat> but then, if you actually win, you know that part of it. Mm. Then there's this whole other part, which is where you have to be uh, this kind of like mach- machinations to be um, actually getting anything done. You have to familiarise yourself. The new senators went to senator school this this week. Um, um, you know, they were made to, made familiar with the procedures of, of uh, the Senate, and it does take a long time to get it... Right. ...to, to become familiarised. Um, you know, it, it would take a number of years, and that's why people... You know, Parliament is just full of these... These terrible, terrible speeches that go into Hansard, nobody listens to, and it's all just these people practicing giving speeches and, and maybe yeah. trying to impress their own side, you know. Yeah. So, so, and, and when you sit down in Parliament, somebody's talking, talking, you know, to the Speaker, 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 Mr. Speaker, and it's all just pap. It just goes nowhere. It seems to be utterly meaningless. Um, but yeah. what they are is just climbing the, the greasy pole. Something must be happening behind the scenes, though, because things do happen in the 
in the in the country. Like things change. So well, they do. Well, so all of this, all of this, it must, it must just be posturing. Or I mean, I noticed like in, in question time, there's there's these questions where, um, you know, the the opposition's trying to get the, the government to say something about uh, GST or say something about asylum seekers or say something about climate change. They're trying to get something on the record that they can use then yeah. in the media or the, in that kind of news cycle. Mm. Um, as as sort of proof it's like okay look here we've got them on record as saying it's like this lawyer thing mm. like it's like a it's like a courtroom uh thing where, where you have to sort of like very much so. and that's why barristers come to the fore you know like uh, people people like uh penny wong and um oh the couple of others anyway that all, all of them i mean aren't they all lawyers <laughs> like john howard uh, yeah. was a lawyer and, uh, yeah 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 uh, uh, heaps uh, of yeah. law backgrounds i i, I don't I, I don't want to say anything about John Howard, but um, <laughs> um, but hey, look, one on a, on a lighter note, um, I got a bit of a, a feedback. I've invented a neologism to describe the libs, and um, I'm not sure whether you've, you've you saw it. Uh, I, I describe them as insidious. And, uh, <laughs> That's pretty good. Insi- you know, it's just creepy, creepy, nasty people. You know, yeah. and, uh, and it, it's it's I, I'm I'm lost for words. Why anybody? Who wasn't part of the rum call would vote for these people. They just, and uh, you know, Scott Morrison this week too, uh, just on by the by the by, made a complete fool of himself. He just, you know, this uh, was it uh, the taxed and the non-taxed, and um, and then he blamed Labor again, and all this sort of. And every commentator that I read mm. just said he's making a complete fool of himself, which is good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. Mm. They they sort of. Uh, I mean, you you'd like to say, oh, they make it easy, but um, then uh, it do, it seems it seems they they can't they can't lose they can't shake, no matter how poor they are at their job or how destructive they are for the country. Mm. That seems that some people are just right there, you know, right there with them the whole time. Um, I think so. I think a lot of it. See, it's, you know, we're a we're we're a country of sport obsessives obsessees you know and um i think that a lot of people just pick their polit- politics the same they they pick their sport you know yeah and i i think that um another another thing that i uh, i was um involved in a bit of a uh, a digital pile on um on twitter this week when i re- when i got involved in a fray with a uh, rita rita pahani Mm, right. her. she's like a Herald Sun reporter anyway she's oh, got right, quite right. A, bit, a bit of a cult following on Twitter yeah. and they're like cult as in uh, insane people but anyway um, I I went in there and said something and then, and then for, for a few days afterwards I just had people replying with all this like oh cultural Marxism and another lefty this and lefty that and but you better mm. pull your socks up and all this kind of stuff and oh that's, that's just what we need and it, it sort of I kind of got this sense that a lot of these people are really putting on a brave face in their own lives. And they feel like this... This I, I got this sense that there's this aggression that might be uh, part of their own coping mechanism. And that when they vote that way, and they, they're not really voting in their best interest. They're voting for an ideolo- ideology that allows them to kind of perpetuate that facade uh, mm. As as a as a means of protecting themselves from as a, a, pre- a pretense of power or control over yeah, the situation. It's like, yeah. Well, the same thing with happened with Brexit. You know, where Farage and so on they they came away from all that and they they said, oh yeah, no, we just lied. And and then and then uh, a lot of people uh, said, you know, they they were um, it was a protest vote, and they do say that uh, um, people vote against things not for things and which mm. which is a bit of a tough one because we actually want to improve the country and we want everybody to be um to live better lives uh we were talking about um how to get um the minor parties to possibly work together or some sort of a collective or collegial yeah, well, this thing is, this was actually something that came off um that uh, you know the changes in senate, senate pref- preferences and, and how the voting works almost all of the votes were this one to six above the line mm. so any any minor parties that weren't in those six were losing a dramatic amount of votes mm. um and so you know really there's this there's this kind of imperative now to amalgamate uh in some way and 
One, yeah, one of the things we're discussing is that maybe what we, what we should be doing is the AEP as a little project is analyzing all of the policy of minor parties. This is something I've I've been interested in doing for a while, but never had the time. Um, and and look at the look at what what conflicts and what alignments there are, and also look at it through the lens of our own policy frameworks. You know, the modern monetary theory, morals versus ethics, and um, not being uh, arseholes over broad, you know, you know, just like having false foreign policy that's not um, really aggressive and abusive. So, um, the, the, you've got the five or six of the minor parties. I think you, if you could listen, it's like the Sex Party, the Science Party, the Pirate Party, Maths Party, Cyclist Party, um, uh, probably the Marijuana Party, although I haven't looked at all of their policies, but I know that they're big things like legalizing cannabis and, and medicinal cannabis. There is a lot of overlap. And that's that represents a huge constituency. Um, mm. If we could really narrow down what are the conflict points between their policies, maybe we can instead of having to you know push the rock up the hill ourselves, we can go and say, well, let's let's um let's get something happening here, and we can still have factions. You know, Labor has factions, but mm. under a single party, because that would just transform the de- the uh, political landscape overnight. Well, you know, certainly, I, th- I think that there's a possibility that that you have some sort of collective or or, or something that some somehow make it work. Where that uh, I think that um, how would you call it? Social democrats. So basically, we're just social democrats. Right. Nobody we're all social use, democrats. Nobody wants to use the term democrats, you know, and uh, um, because for obvious reasons, you know, it's just finished now. But it it often comes back to personalities and all that. So I think we'll we'll talk about this again later. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a, you know, I guess this is just to be continued. But yeah. um, we're going to be, if anyone's interested in getting involved in that project and that discussion specifically, mm-hmm. so hop on over to the forum. There's a policy discussion uh, category and there's boards in there for each policy. So uh, any, everyone who's listening to this is welcome to come along and, and be a part of that, including other minor parties. We just want to talk to other minor parties because I see that as, as potentially um, a way to, to get the... You know, it's a, the constantly the the comes to mind is the life of Brian. You know, the people's front of Judea versus the Judean people. Oh, front. it's it, yeah, it's Coles and Woolworths. You know, it's just a duopoly. Um, they're both neoliberal parties. Um, neither of them understand how economy works. They neither of them talk about our society and how it should work. Um, yeah. Labor yes. Labor abandoned us to the hell that was Tony Abbott. They didn't help explain anything that was happening. They never even talked about how he was manipulating the, the, the dark side of Australian. So they didn't talk about how what John Howard did to our national psyche. They're also, the, you know, the butter wouldn't melt in their mouth, but they're just, I have not too much respect for people who are in a position of power. They have an obligation to talk to the population about what's going on. But Labor's just too busy playing its own games. You right, know? so you've got the major parties are really asleep at the wheel. Mm. And, um, you know, the minor parties in the aggregate, if you t- if you took the overlap mm. of, of... Oh, sorry, there was one more that I didn't add to that was the arts party. If you took the overlap of all of these parties and combined in aggregate the votes, it would just... You would have, like, more senators than the Greens... And one nation, or something. I don't know. Well, we well, you, you could send each other's uh, preferences. It, not in the Senate, of course. This is the trouble: is we're more likely to be going for the Senate. And uh, uh, yeah, well, that's why, like, the preference thing in the Senate's over. So that's why I think it has to be an amalgamation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, so, we'll have a we'll have a look at that. We need to so talk to somebody. So something to watch about. out for if you mm. if you're interested in that side of things. Uh, if you're interested in actually getting involved in the politics of it. Uh, you know the machinations, as as we've been discussing, the political side of politics, rather than the the sort of policy side of politics. Mm. Um, if you're interested in in that side of things, hop on over to the forum. It's AEP. That's Alpha Echo Panama. Dot free forum free forums. Dot net. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's continue that. It's it's an interesting avenue, and I think it's something that has a lot of promise. Well, I think we should maybe get the heads of the other parties onto this talk. We we should have a talk with them. Absolutely. Let's, yeah. uh, let's try and make okay. it Okay. Well, thanks again for 20 minutes, but, you know, what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> it was good talking with you. Okay. You again. Bye-bye. All right. See you.